But first, sexting, tweeting, and oversharing. What do these things have in common? Well, if you're a millennial, someone between the ages of 18 and 34, or you're raising one, these are the issues on everyone's mind. And today, we are digging in. So let's get started. <laughs> Welcome, lifestyle expert and host of the radio talk show, The Chelsea Cross Show, 24 year old Chelsea Cross, Bravo TV star and TV entrepreneur, 25 year old Chris Manzo, and anchor of the Daily Share on HLN, 33 year old Roxy Diaz. Now, wait a minute, what? <laughs> So 33 looks good, Thank all right? Thank you. So you're going to have to guide me through this. First up, busted on Twitter. A Texas teen recently made headlines after she was fired for a tweet she posted the night before she started a new job. She wrote, ew, I can't believe I start this blanking job tomorrow. Well, her boss replied with his own tweet, and no, you don't start that job today. I just fired you. Good luck with your no money, no job life. Even before she started, yeah, and here's another one. Taco Bell fired two employees after they posted a photo of one of them licking a stack of Dorito Cool Ranch tacos. Here's the photo. Take a look at that. Yeah. I know it's important to note that Taco Bell released a statement that these taco shells were used for training and were going to be thrown out anyway. Nobody actually got them a customer. So what do you think? First of all, do you agree that these people should have been fired? The girl not even, I mean, she hadn't even started yet. And then these two employees of Taco Bell. Yes, you, I think that in every way, right. If you're already cursing out the job that you haven't even started, we don't need that negative energy here. And yet, here, interestingly yeah. enough, online, more people supported her than the boss. Well, I think the problem that we're having with social media is for this, you know, freedom of speech. Social media allows you to post whatever you want. So if she's saying, "Ugh, you know, I'm not too, too excited about me starting my job tomorrow, is that her fault? I don't really think it's the boss's job, so to speak, to kind of give her the boost that she might need. She's doing something stupid. Right. She goes in and you're showing a horrible judge of character off the bat. And as someone, I mean, I've worked in managerial things and I've done a million different jobs in the past. I don't need to know that you hate the job that you Before need to start. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of people that aren't working, and I'm sure they'll be happy to not tweet So where do you all drive the line when it comes to social media? Watch what you say. Yeah. I, I put it like this way. If my mama don't like it, then I don't post it. That's Is there something that you regret posting? No, because Nothing. my mama stalks me. Oh, my. No, no. I, I am so careful when I post things. I don't know about you guys. I don't post personal things on mine. I think we all have to just think before we post. Yes. You know, just take a beat before we send that tweet, before we post that Instagram, before we post it to Vine, Snapchat, whatever. Is it worth it? How could some, it get misconstrued? You know, that four, 140 characters doesn't really allow you to convey that much emotion or thought or opinion into a tweet, and that can really get misconstrued. So then why are so many millennials texting, uh, sexting, I guess it is, sexting? I have a gross body, so I don't send pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting. Do you get them? I'm like the Michelin man. When I'm <laughs> but, no, you're um, not. You've never even sent, like, a shirtless... Like, if at you the saw gym, it, you would, you would, no, at the gym, I've never been to a gym in my life. <laughs> so, but as far as receiving them goes, I kind of look at it and people think I'm crazy like a, like a lottery ticket. I don't go out of my way to get a lottery ticket. I've never bought one. If you give me one, I'll be like, well, thank you. Like, I won't, but I'll never ask and I won't push for it. But if, if there's a chance that it lands in the right hands... Thanks. Yeah, well, do you? I've personally sent pictures yeah. before. However, I thoroughly decided that the person that I was sending the pictures to was worth my while, and those pictures never got around. It's really sad that this generation now is feeling the need to show off their body more than showing off their mind and how smart yes. they are, which is That's actually so sad. Yeah. Really, really sad. Okay. Next issue has this panel pretty outraged. Duke University state surveyed nearly 1,000 companies about millennials. Nearly 60% said their companies had no interest in attracting these young people. The main reasons they felt they were too entitled, needed too much hand-holding, and they lacked company loyalty. Roxy. It's not so much that these big CEOs, CFOs are saying they don't want to attract them, but it's that younger millennials actually aren't interested in working for another person. They're, they want to work for themselves, and they're creating these YouTube channels and their own businesses and their own jobs. So I think that that, that survey is kind of skewed because it's not that they're entitled. They feel that they could do it on their own as well as and be well, just yeah. as successful. Chris, do you agree with the survey? Uh, I completely agree with it. The only th real issue that I have with, with anything uh, that you just said, really, 
people can do it on their own. It doesn't mean they should. I know people that come out of school and they don't have a marketing degree, they have no marketing background, and they start a marketing company. Why does that make sense? I have absolutely no idea. Um, and I mean, yeah, I think everyone the, my age in certain cases, myself included probably, definitely one, have a sense of entitlement. The one thing that drives me absolutely bananas though is that there are millennials who are couch potatoes and boomerang yeah. babies and living off their parents because they can, but there are so many millennials who are hustling to make a mark. Right. But I do remember, yeah. But I also remember um, distinctly when I was, uh, when I was at The View, we had uh, interns who came through, you know, on a regular basis. And I'll never forget this. We, at the same time, we had an intern woman who went to an Ivy League school and a woman who went to a junior college. And the woman who went to the young girl who went to the Ivy League school felt totally entitled, did not want to get anybody a cup of coffee, nothing. And the other girl was an incredibly hard worker, did what she was asked, what she was asked, and then some. Mm -hmm. And I finally said to the girl who was the Ivy girl, I said, you know what? There's a check mark going over your head right now. And people are going to remember this. You cannot act that way. I don't have any idea what happened to her. The other girl got hired. Right. So that's, it just says a lot about, we don't, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You can have all these accolades and go to the best school or whatever it is. It's really the way you behave yes. mm -hmm. in the workplace and what you bring to it in terms of your passion and your commitment, I think. When we started this show, we wanted actually a young perspective. Um, and I can tell you our staff, 30% of our staff are millennials. And they work so incredibly hard. They're here. I get in at 7. They're usually here at 6. Mm -hmm. I mean, that place is so busy. I leave. They're here. 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, midnight, because they care about what they do. I'm so impressed by the young people that I have seen through my job. I'm so proud that they are part of this show. And um, I'm, I'm a mom. I'm a mom of three millennials. I have three kids in their 20s. So if they were working on this show and I was watching at home, I'd want to see my kids. So I want our staff to come on out, all the millennials. Come on out, guys. And I want to be really nice to them because one day I'm going to be asking them for a job. So <laughs> that you guys are the best. We love you so much, and I hope your mom and dad are watching. When we come back. Ton of questions, including one woman who wants to know how to kick her 35 year old son out of the house. That's oh, next. Wow. <laughs> we are back with our panel of millennials 24 year old Chelsea Cross, 25 year old Chris Manzo, 33 year old Roxy Diaz. It's time for our audience quick <laughs> <a> take. <laughs> <laughs> You're still in the group. All right. First question comes from Maureen, I believe it is. Hi, Maureen. <laughs> Hi. My 35-year-old son still lives at home. Um, should I be pressuring to move out? I don't have a problem with it. Why is he still at home, out of curiosity? Well, he's divorced. Ah. Yeah. So he stays with us, and it's just hard where we live to find decent housing. Yeah. But have he does have a new girlfriend with a house. <laughs> so. Question, how old was he when he first moved out of the house? He never moved out of the oh, house. Oh, he never? Oh. Even they, when he was married? They all, they stayed, all of them. Oh, <laughs> wow. You must be a good cook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. Cooking good. Yeah. And then they'll yeah. be gone. Okay, well, my 30, my 27-year-old moved back in, but then he bought a house and moved out, so. Did, but does he have a job? Could, can he support he himself? He has a job. Yeah, it's an okay job. Yeah, I, I think I you need to push him out. I, I, I really yeah. do. <laughs> Sake, I think. I, I, I kind of disagree on that because I think that it's a real American tradition. I, I mean, I grew up in a Latin household and it was in my culture and my generation and a lot of other cultures outside the United States. I see that family stays together for a very long time. Even, yes, yes, because the, they do not move on or and I, I know many, many homes where uh, whether it be Latin, Arabic, you know, Asian, outside of the United States, my, my point is, is that I feel that we pressure our kids too much in this country to get out, get out, get out, and when they get out, they don't succeed. But he's and not then they feel 20. Safe. To, to what? that point, I didn't know how bad I wanted to not live at home until I moved out. I moved out just kind of, why not, I'm 21, let's see what I could do. And then I moved home just when I was in between apartments for about a month, 
and I, I was willing to live anywhere that I could. So <laughs> once, once you try something, and if he's never tried it, he's never lived away from home, I think maybe he'll learn a lot about himself, and then yeah, he'll that. say, you know what, I want to learn more about myself, exactly. and that's what I can do. Put a timeline on it. You know, hey, we love you. We're we did your that. parents. We did that. <laughs> <laughs> I personally, and, and I, don't, I don't have kids, but I personally would rather have my child, no matter what age, be safe and, and stable-minded in my home under my roof than going out and trying to do it on their own and depressed and falling into debt and, fall, and doing all these other things and, and God forbid what could happen. So, uh, I mean, I, a family that prays together, stays together, stay under the same roof. Mm -hmm. I just, I wouldn't, I don't think, my mom already has threatened me that she's coming to live with me because she's getting older in age, so what's the difference, in my, in my opinion? I, I just wouldn't kick well, them good out. Luck, yeah. good, good luck, Maureen, good luck. Thank you. All right, Haley. Hi, Haley. Hi. Um, so everyone I know is meeting people on dating sites such as Tinder, Happen, stuff like that. It's never really worked for me, and I'm wondering, is that how people are meeting these days? I don't meet people that way. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, if you go on Tinder or a website, whatever it is, you'll see a picture of me, a small bio, you'll see a very handsome face and probably a very witty bio, but I'm also humble. You can't tell that from something like that. There's a lot of things you don't know about a person from using a website, six pictures, and first of all, we all know you're using the best pictures of you that you can, and that's not right. Are you in so, the minority, though? What's among, up? Are you in the minority? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't people? think there's anything wrong with it. Let me put right, that out right. there, but... I'd like to get to know somebody first. That's kind of my favorite quality in a person is whether or not they can keep my attention. So I can't tell that from your 140-word bio and pictures of all 16 of your friends. I think millennials are all about online dating because it's just a way other than getting introduced by a friend, by a family member, or meeting someone out and about. It's just an, another resource available to us. I, I know tons of people who have met people online, and either, you know, they had a great one night, or they've, it's lasted into a relationship. I know people who got married off of Tinder. Um, I think also it's finding the right online source that works for you. You know, you got Tinder, you got Match, you got Cupid, you got FarmersOnly.com. Um, <laughs> there are, you know, if there's like different strokes for different folks. So I think maybe try a different I checked online my Farmers uh, for research. For I did, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when Chris was the bachelor, you know, yeah, so it was pretty good. Thanks to all of our experts. We'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you.